Hello and welcome to the Starting Sisters series where we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Sisters of Battle also known as the Adeptus Sororitas. In this video we'll be looking at the elite choices for the army and for the Sisters of Battle the elite choice is the most crowded unit type that they can pick from as it contains quite a few very competitive options as well as some mediocre ones that do see fringe play and finally there are a few that aren't particularly great but for the most part the elite slot is where a large portion of your army will be coming from for the Sisters of Battle. To start off this video, we'll be looking at the strongest unit within the elite slot, known as the Repentia. The Repentia are an incredibly powerful unit that is seen in many lists as the maximum allowable unit type of three squads of nine Repentia, though in some cases you do see people going for only one or two squads of Repentia as they're trying to go for a more gunline style of play, whereas the Repentia are an incredibly powerful melee unit, but don't offer much in the sense of shooting. Before we really get into the Repentia themselves, I'd like to address something that a lot of players don't realize or question at the very least. That being that the Repentia do benefit from the order buffs, unlike other units such as Mortifiers, Penitent Engines, and Arcoflagellant. And the reason for this being a rather interesting piece of lore, as I found it rather interesting. The lore behind the Repentia in-game is that they're not actually heretics or failures being punished for something, but rather, in many cases, they are sisters of battle that have chosen to become Repentia out of their own volition in a strange sort of pilgrimage where instead of fasting or making a long journey or walking across hot coals, they go into battle lightly armored, wielding heavy chain swords known as eviscerators. So as such, they're not actually disgraced sisters, but in many cases they're actually venerated because a lot of sisters look at them as someone who has taken their faith to such a fanatical level that they're willing to risk their lives in order to cleanse themselves of any internal sin that they might still have, in order to ascend as opposed to repent to some extent. And I think that's a really interesting way of writing them because it would have been really easy to say that they're just sisters being punished and they're just kind of the first step into becoming a mortal fire if you do fail, but it's actually much more interesting that there's something that sisters look up to as opposed to something sisters look down upon because of their position in the army. Anyway, now that we know a bit of the background history of the Repentia, let's look at what they do on the tabletop. The first thing you have to know about the Repentia is that they're an incredibly fragile unit, so they will need some kind of transport or to be put into strategic reserves. The reason for this being is that they only have a toughness of three and one wound, with their only protection being a shield of faith and vulnerable save as well as a five plus feel no pain save. More so, they're a rather slow moving unit with only 6 inches, so they really do need some way of gaining some mobility as well as protection, otherwise they'll just be blown off the table before they actually accomplish anything. And in that sense, you have to either pay attacks and command points to put them into strategic reserves, or you have to pay the points in your army list to put them into a rhino. Either one works very well, and the nice thing about the Repentia is they do benefit from acts of faith as they are still sisters of battle and aren't punished heretics or anything of that sort. So they can use miracle dice, meaning that they have a very easy time making long distance charges, such as 12 inches because they can use miracle dice to essentially assure making the charge when they need to. As their survivability is rather weak and their mobility is only good when using miracle dice in order to make a charge, where they really do shine is once they are within melee. And the reason for this being is that not only do they have the zealot ability, but each Repentia has two attacks and they bring a weapon to the table that makes them strength six with three armor penetration and two damage per attack. They do have a minus one to hit with this weapon, but with the way modifiers stack in ninth edition, this is way less of a drawback and in some cases it doesn't even matter because some enemies have a built-in minus one to hit anyway so when that does happen you're essentially not losing anything. However I will say this even though 9th edition has so far been very kind to them the one thing to consider is that we're seeing armies like Death Guard now which have a built-in damage reduction so in some cases if we do see more armies gaining damage reduction abilities that two damage becomes weaker and as such they'll be receiving a minor nerf indirectly as a result of this. However so far we've only really seen that with the Death Guard and in other armies the damage reduction seems to be limited to things like the warlord trait so it's mostly uncommon. Now the other thing to realize is that even though they have a decent profile as is, they do still benefit from the order buffs as mentioned previously, meaning that if you put them into the bloody rose order, which is almost always what you pick for the Repentia due to their survivability being weak but their melee being strong, this brings them up to 4 armor penetration for each attack and if they make a charge or are charged, they go up to 3 attacks each so they really start stacking those attacks very quickly and those attacks are incredibly brutal as they only allow pretty much invulnerable saves and feel no pain saves while still having a pretty good chance of hitting thanks to the zealot ability and they wound pretty easily against anything with toughness 5 or less because they're strength 6. Additionally if you further group them with a preacher or missionary you gain yet another attack if they're within 6 inches of the preacher or missionary meaning that when they're charging they go up to 4 attacks total per model and that gives you 36 attacks for a squad of 9 though even without the preacher they still have a total of 27 attacks on the charge which will shred most midrange units and even clearing out swarm units because that strength 6 will do a lot of work against toughness 
three models. They also have a couple of unique stratagems, the first one being the Desperate for Redemption stratagem that we've seen on the Mortifiers and Penitent engines. This allows them to fight for a second time for three command points, and while this is way better on a large unit of Mortifiers, there are going to be situations where this stratagem is great on the Repentia because it does really allow them to clear out incredibly tough units, and in some cases you'll desperately need to clear out a unit from your opponent in order to either score an objective or to get it off the table. Now the second stratagem they have is a little more unique to them, and that is called Final Redemption. For one command point, you pick a unit of Repentia in combat. When a Repentia model is destroyed in combat, you roll a d6, and on a 4+, plus, the enemy suffers one mortal wound. It's alright, and the Repentia usually won't survive long due to the poor survivability, so this one can be okay at times, but it's more of a last resort than a focus of the Repentia. So as a whole, to wrap up the Repentia, they are very much a glass cannon unit that does an incredible amount of damage when it is in combat, but if it gets focus fired, or if the enemy is strong enough to get counterattacks in, a lot of times the Repentia will be dying out, though sometimes you might get very lucky with your rolls, especially on that feel no pain, and you might actually force your opponent to waste way more firepower than they really like to on a unit of Repentia, just because how much of a threat they are. Though the best part about them is really being able to come out of strategic reserves, or to be moved around the table with the Rhino, and then making incredibly long distance charges, thanks to their Miracle Dice. They're incredibly good at both killing mid-range units, which we see a lot of in play right now, like Marines or Catafrons for the Admet, but they're also no slouch in clearing out Swarm units, because they do put out a decent amount of attacks, and those attacks do a ton of damage. So while they might be weak against things like the Death Guard, they're probably incredibly good against almost everything else. Following the Repentia is the Zephram units, and the Zephram are a unit that already saw play, but has received several buffs throughout 9th edition, such as gaining plus 1 strength from their power swords, as well as a recent buff that dropped them slightly in points level, while the Repentia went up slightly in points. Even before this change, the Zephram were seeing play alongside the Repentia, though after the points change, they went from being slightly worse than the Repentia, to probably being on par with the Repentia, however they serve very different roles within the army, so comparing them is not necessarily accurate, and you probably will see people taking more Zephram alongside Repentia now that they're more equal in terms of points per power level. Zephram like Repentia are definitely a unit you want to take a max squad size of usually, or at least a larger squad size of 5, unlike the Zephram which build out of the same box, but you prefer taking in a smaller squad of 5. The reason for this being that all of the Zephram pretty much come armed with the same weapons, and they're not really worried about taking additional special weapons. And to understand why the Repentia and the Zephram aren't necessarily comparable units, is that the Repentia are a glass cannon unit that is incredibly strong in melee but has weak survivability and rather weak mobility overall. While on the other hand, the Zephram have a decently strong melee profile, however they have much better mobility and they have a rather good survivability as well. So this makes them a lot more of a mid-range unit that can do a lot of different tasks within the army while still being good in melee as needed. So looking at the stat line of the Zephram, they start out with a 12 inch move, which is a rather fast speed for a unit. They have a 3 plus normal save and they have a shield of faith save, which innately gains plus one from their angelic visage ability, meaning that they have a base line of a 5 plus invulnerable save, though they still only have 3 toughness like all other sisters of battle, which is a lot lower than you would like for survivability reasons. In terms of their offensive capabilities, they each come armed with a bolt pistol and a power sword, as well as frag and crack grenades. The power swords bring up their melee profile to a strength of 4 with 3 armor penetration and 1 damage per attack, and the bolt pistols give them some range ability while also being able to shoot within melee due to their pistol profile, and if you're looking for a little bit more firepower, you can take a plasma pistol on the from Superior. They additionally have a melee focus ability called Rapturous Blows, which allows them to reroll wound rolls within melee combat that they make, and this adds up to a decent damage profile within melee, while still having a decent amount of survivability. To further understand why they're such a mobile unit, you also have to understand that they come with a deep strike ability, which lets them deep strike within 9 inches of any enemy, as normal deep strike rules follows, and this allows them to do all kinds of things like take objectives out of the way, or land in places where they'll be able to perform an action like deploy scramblers, or if they simply land within 9 inches of an enemy, a lot of times it's easier to make 9 inches off of Miracle Dice than it is to make 12 inches off of Miracle Dice, or at the very least you can use weaker dice to make that 9 inches versus having to use two sixes in order to get that 12 inches of Miracle Dice charge range. Again, sometimes it'll be a little awkward as neither the Repentia nor the Zephram have a Simulacrum, but at the very least you can get them into combat over different turns using the Miracle Dice or simply trying to make a normal charge roll. And as the Zephram have a pistol weapon as well as a rather strong melee profile as a whole, it should come as no surprise that the best order for them is the Bloody Rose Order, and almost in every situation you will be putting them in the Bloody Rose Order, so you can
can gain that armor penetration on both the pistol and the power sword while gaining an additional attack on the charge which they can make rather easily because of their normal 12 inch movement as well as the deep strike ability. Another thing the Zephram can do is the Zephram can actually buff friendly units within 6 inches of them. It's not something they do particularly amazingly well but it's something that's an option. For example the Zephram Superior can take an item called the Zephram Penitent which gives order units within 6 inches of the Penitent the ability to reroll charge rolls. So an interesting thing you can do is if you deep strike the Zephram next to a unit that you really need to make a charge on but will not be able to use Miracle Dice on because you might be using the Miracle Dice on a different unit or you don't have the rolls in your Miracle Dice pool to use at the time. However this isn't something you'll really be doing often because the Zephram Penitent actually costs a fair amount of points and is a rather niche aura ability that you in a lot of cases won't find a use for so unfortunately it's not particularly that good or that playable. Though in addition to the Penitent the Zephram have a stratagem called Embodied Prophecy and what it does is for one command point it allows you to pick a unit of Zephram and friendly units within six inches can reroll wound rolls of one during the fight phase. There are probably going to be situations where you do use this ability. It does seem a little bit on the weaker side compared to some of the other things you can get for command points. To wrap up the Zephram as a whole they're definitely a mid-range unit and they do everything rather well but they aren't as much of a boom bust unit like the Repentia are who are incredibly specialized at doing one thing very well but fall flat at most other things that they try to accomplish. And more so they're definitely a very strong and versatile unit as such and that's why they're such a powerful unit because you can really decide how you want to play them in different matchups and they can pivot really easily so that in certain matchups where they would be weaker they function as objective units and units that move around the table while in other matchups where their melee is more important they can use that to their advantage in order to be damage output units whereas on the other hand with specialized units like the Repentia if you find yourself in a matchup where they don't really have much utility which is going to be very rare you're going to have a hard time finding a use for them unless you're throwing them on an objective that is behind line of sight blocking terrain such that they can use that as their safety. In third place we will have the Celestians which is the Gemini superior for the every woman. Celestians are great because they're essentially a basic sister of battle that costs one extra point but gains a whole lot of stats and abilities for that one extra point per model and they build out of the same box as the regular sisters of battle so they're a real easy option to take within a list. In terms of stats for that one point they gain plus one weapon skill, one extra attack and melee and one extra point of leadership and right away that alone is enough to take them over a basic sister of battle because you gain all of this for a very negligible point investment. And that's not all they gain because on top of that they also gain two special abilities over the basic sisters. The first being bodyguard which lets them intercept damage for friendly order characters if you decide to by rolling a d6 and on a 2 plus they take one mortal wound instead of the character taking one point of damage. It's a bit of a rough ability to use but it can really help keep a character alive when you really need them to. Or what you can do is you can do something like having a character with mantle of Saint Ophelia take damage and if they happen to fail the 3 plus invulnerable save you can try to put the damage onto one of the Celestians. It's a tricky strategy but it can really do some work if you set it up correctly. The second ability they have is called Swarm Protectors and it says if they're within six inches of a Canis they can reroll any hit rolls instead of just hit rolls of one. And this really does help them a bit because all of a sudden they can reroll ones and twos because they have a ballistic skill of three plus but if your enemy has a minus one to hit modifier they can also reroll rolls of three as well. Any other roll that you choose because you're not restricted to rerolling just misses. However you shouldn't try to build around this ability but rather a Canis being escorted by Celestians and this being an extra perk that they pick up from escorting her. Now on top of all these abilities the Celestians can take two special weapons or one special weapon and one heavy weapon as well as combat weapons on the superior. Normally if you're going to take heavy weapons you're just going to take a squad of retributors and put those heavy weapons on the retributors as they do better with things like multi meltas not only ignoring penalties for moving with heavy weapons but also having a rather good stratagem that allows them to extend the range and damage of the multi melta. So with units like this or even the dominions what you're generally going to be taking is special weapons and not heavy weapons. While the Storm Bolter is definitely an okay option considering how few points it is, usually what you're probably going to be looking at is something like the Melta Gun and you can take up to two Melta Guns and a Combine Melta in a squad which does give you a lot of fire output though it does bring up the points rather quickly on the unit. So usually you're only going to take two at most though a lot of times you'll take one or none at all because you can use the Celestians as decent units as a unit providing general Bolter fire thanks to the Canvas rerolls and their extra attacks and things like that within combat. One thing I should also mention is that the Melta guns are assault weapons so that you can advance and fire assault weapons which helps out with the rather short range of 12 inches on the Melta gun and combo Melta and if they're next to Canis they gain a little bit of extra benefit from that Swarm Protector ability because they gain minus one to hit when they're advancing and firing assault weapons. Now they have one stratagem that is semi-unique to them which is called Blessed Bolts. We've looked at it in the past and it's an okay stratagem if you're running two Storm Bolters on them though even then it's not particularly worthwhile simply because you're investing a lot to gain a little bit of armor penetration though there are going to be times where you're going to want it. 
Their second stratagem, which is actually a unique stratagem, is called Exceptional Proficiency, which lets them reroll the hit roll and or the wound roll in either shooting or combat, but it does cost two command points, which isn't the best, and it can be a little awkward, though if you're away from a cannonist and you really need to take out a target, sometimes you're going to pay those two command points just to assure a little bit more accuracy and damage in your shooting. Generally speaking, they're a solid unit that isn't as powerful as the Repentia or the Zephyr, but they can still do a lot as their stats are rather great and they're a rather low points cost. Not to mention that they can soak damage while escorting a Canis and gain a little bit more accuracy from the rerolls that the Canis provides to their hit rolls. And as such, they're definitely a better unit than just the Basic Sisters due to how much they gain for just that one extra point. However, the Basic Sister unit should not be discounted in the face of Dominions or Celestians. It's simply going to be that those are going to be generally better choices in most cases, but there are going to be certain situations in which you just want more Sisters of Battle in order to do things like take objectives and just be a general nuisance for your opponent. So there's definitely a decent amount of variety in all these choices. After the top three choices within the elite slot, we come to a series of choices that do see play but are a lot more fringe than the top three. And the reason being is that each one of these fills a little bit of a niche role that is nice to have but not every list really needs or wants to have. The first of these choices is the Magifier and she's a rather expensive model at 45 points for the model itself. She does have the profile of a basic sister but she does come with four wounds and three attacks which isn't bad in itself though she's not really going to be putting out a lot of damage because her weapon choices are mostly non-existent. What the Magifier really brings to the army is a set of different litany buffs that you pick one of three from a list and she produces that aura buff for the rest of the game. The auras are as follows. There's Tales of the Faithful which allows friendly order models within six inches to reroll the Deny the Witch test. This is a nice ability but it's kind of redundant and in the sister's army you should have plenty of ways to deny the witch without having to use this though maybe if there's a situation where you're really worried about it you can use this as a little bit of extra redundancy because it does exist though most of the time you're really not going to care about this. The second litany she offers is Tales of the Warrior and what this says is friendly order models within six inches gain one strength and once again this is rather mediocre because most of the time this isn't going to bring up the strength profile of your units to be significantly relevant and this would require her to be next to a unit that's in melee combat which is somewhat of an awkward thing to do because she is a rather slow moving model and most of the time you're just going to want a missionary or a preacher instead of her to buff your melee units because the preacher or missionary gives plus one attack versus just plus one strength and that one extra attack is always going to be better. The third litany that she has is the Tales of the Stoic. This is normally why you take that magifier. This litany states that friendly order models within six inches treat enemy weapons with an armor penetration of one as being zero. This also stacks with the Valorous Heart Order Conviction to reduce both one and two armor penetration weapons to zero and that can really give a lot of survivability to your units, especially if you park her near your shooting units, forcing your opponent to devote heavy firepower to your units or face failing to wipe out your key firepower units, especially with things like Retributors where they can't fire at them with weaker weapons because they'll have their normal armor save and be able to withstand a lot more firepower, as opposed to if they're making a much higher armor save to try to prevent damage being taken. The Imagifier also has a special stratagem that allows you to pay one command point, and instead of picking one litany at the beginning of the game, you pick two and you gain both of them. This is definitely okay, but most of the time you're just going to want that tail of the stoic and I guess you can use this to gain that extra deny the witch or to gain that extra strength buff if you think you're really going to need it but honestly I think most of the time you're going to be okay with just the stoic ability. Granted this does exist so there's going to be situations where you might want to use it. It's definitely not a terrible stratagem. It's just one that you're not really going to care about unless you care about one of those other two litanies that don't interact as well as you'd like them to with the tail of the stoic. To wrap up the Magifier she's a good buff unit but a little restrictive at times. Still she can do rather well at times and as a character she can carry other abilities such as a warlord trait from heroin in the making or be brought back with divine intervention if something bad happens to her. She's not as common as the top three but she does pop up every now and then and she can do some work within the army list that do want to bring her. In fifth place we have the preacher whose model makes me think he looks like a guy named Boris. What the preacher is is he's basically the missionary which was covered in the HQ choices video but he only costs 35 points which is a nice way to save some points. However he is in a much more competitive slot of the lead choice whereas the HQ choice is very competitive but usually you have a little bit more leeway in that slot. The real benefit of the preacher or the missionary is that they have a six inch aura that gives friendly models plus one attack within combat and this is a nice ability especially when you consider that a repentia max out in a unit size of nine and the rhino can carry up to ten units so he fits very easily into the rhino though on the other hand if you're using strategic reserves he is two power level which makes him a little bit more awkward than if he was just one power level but even then he's still perfectly fine as an option if you have a couple extra power 
power level to throw him into strategic reserves. Also one other thing to consider is the range restriction on his aura ability can be a bit odd because if you miracle dice to charge the Repentia and he fails the charge you might lose out on the extra attacks because now he's further than six inches away from them though what you can do in order to avoid this situation is you can actually advance him instead of charging to get him into range of units in the combat as all you really care about is his aura ability and not his combat profile so in other words what you do is you advance him forward so that he gets close enough to be within six inches once the repentia charge in although he's not in combat himself that's kind of a little bit of a trick you can do in order to guarantee something while giving up a little bit something in return to wrap up the preacher he is a simple and solid unit if you want what he has to offer and looking at his attire he'd be proud of that description so cheers to our boy boris in sixth place we have the gemini superior and this is a unit that we actually covered within the hq choice video so if you're interested in more info on them do check out the hq video because it'll go into a lot more detail however we'll go with a quick rundown in this video for them they're a bit like the zephyrum but can't deep strike and have a good amount of benefits when paired with the hq choice celestine a major aspect of them is that they don't take up a unit slot when celestine is in your army which means they don't really compete with lead choices in most cases when you're taking them however as such you only really take them as a bonus unit to Celestine and you don't really want them otherwise because they don't really bring enough to the table. In seventh place we'll have two different units because both these units perform essentially the same function within an army. These units being the Death Cult Assassins and the Crusaders. Both units are mostly objective goons as their base squad size has a power level of one which makes them easy to fit into strategic reserves. Both have pros and cons so it's more of a matter of preference but the Death Cult Assassins have seen more success than the Crusaders and let's take a look at what each offers. In the movement department the Death Cult assassins went out as they have a movement of seven inches over six inches of the crusader this isn't that big of a deal but it definitely helps when you're trying to move things around the board to take objectives however when it comes to the survivability category the crusaders easily went out as they have a three plus invulnerable save thanks to their storm shields and they have a five plus feel no pain against psychic powers while the death cult assassin only has a five plus invulnerable save off of their reflexes for their weapons they both have a power sword like weapon giving them a total of four strength and three armor pen penetration as well as both them having the zealot ability however the death cult assassins do have four attacks each in comparison to the crusaders having two attacks each so in this case the death cult assassins once again take the victory finally as far as points go the pair of death cult assassins in a minimum squad will only run you 26 points while on the other hand the crusaders will run you a total of 32 points for the two that you get within a squad this is probably why the death cult assassins have one out as they're less points and have a bit more damage output in melee so they can fight other objective goons while the crusaders are more of a tank there can definitely be an argument for crusaders though as there are plenty of weapons that ignore line of sight and they don't have a terrible combat profile either thanks to their power swords as a whole i personally like the crusaders a little more than the death cult assassins but that might just be because i really like the crusader models and i like the fact that they have so much survivability though really the death cult assassins aren't far behind while the previous units mentioned all seven of them have seen tournament play at a high level now we go into units that haven't seen tournament play yet and i don't think they will bar anything odd happening and that should really emphasize how competitive the elite slot is because seven of the choices have seen tournament play in the top four of tournaments and that's a really crazy metric first on the list of these units is the hospitaller coming in at eighth place it's a model i really like but i don't like the rules that it has the rules for this model are rather simple she is 40 points and can resurrect one model a turn from a unit while this can be rather strong in theory it's very much an ability that falls apart if your opponent understands how to play against it the reason being that if they know she can bring back power units like retributors with moldy meltas they'll wipe that unit out completely so that she can't revive models within it this means that you will at best get weaker units back while forcing your opponent to devote more firepower to assure wiping out stronger units but is that really enough i don't think so more so remember the hospitaller doesn't do much outside of this ability so you need to bring back 40 points of models just to break even and you're limited to one model a turn the good thing is she's a character so she has some good protection from that so that's a silver lining at least as a whole in most cases you'll be better off just taking 40 points of models on the table to start with then taking the hospitaller as a contribute to what you can do in game while they're on the table that being said if you can find a way to revive more than 40 points with her consistently she does essentially let you show up to the game with more than 2,000 points in your army list but remember you're losing 40 points of power right off the bat because until you've resurrected 40 points of models you basically just use the 40 points for a model that does nothing but resurrect models it's definitely a unit that can be interesting but in many cases it gives your opponent too much ability to just outplay you as her ability is dependent on your opponent's actions and not your actions necessarily which means you lack control over it and that's not a fun place to be as you definitely always want to have full control over your own models as opposed to allowing your opponent to dictate what you can do with your abilities 
In ninth place, we have the Arcoflagellants. They're really cool models, and I think they might find a home someday, but right now they're definitely overshadowed by the Repentia very heavily. For the most part, they are a bit weaker than the Repentia, but can put out quite a lot of attacks as they have flails, which make three attacks for every attack they make, similar to the Mortifiers. They're also less points than the Repentia, but not by a significant amount. Think of it this way, if you're willing to pay one point to take Celestians or Dominions over Basic Sisters, you're also willing to pay one point to take Repentia over Arcoflagellants. The biggest issue is that unlike Repentia, the Arcoflagellants don't have the order buffs, so they can't benefit from Bloody Rose or other buffs, which really does hurt their output, and for the most part, the Repentia will outperform them against mid-range units that are currently very popular within the 9th edition meta. Maybe if swarms become incredibly common, these guys will see more play, but Repentia are fine against swarms as well, and Mortifiers definitely do a better job of taking out swarms than pretty much anything else in the game. Then again, on the topic of Mortifiers, in the heavy support video, I ragged on Penitent Engines, but didn't consider that someone would max out Mortifiers and then take Penitent engines for extra mortifier like bodies as was seen in a recent list that did very well in an Australian tournament that was actually a rather large scale and competitive tournament so maybe someone will take these guys alongside Repentia although Zephyrm are still a very real challenger to them so they definitely have a lot more competition before they reach playability as opposed to the penitent engine which is similar enough to the mortifier within melee to be considered as an option when you filled out all of your mortifier slots and you just want more mortifiers in melee in 10th place we have the Repentia Superior which unlike the Repentia is is a significantly weaker model than it really should be. This is a model that doesn't do enough for its points cost. It's playable if you're just trying to reach a certain points threshold as it comes in every box of Repentia, but when you want to refine your list and you have some extra models, this is an easy cut to make within that list. The nice thing is she does have a decent amount of attacks, but her neural whips are rather weak at only strength three, but they at least have two armor penetration, which is something I guess. For special abilities, she has one that allows you to reroll advance and charge rolls for the Repentia within six inches, but usually miracle dice are enough to get those charges as you need them, although sometimes you have more units of Repentia than Miracle Dice that you can use. The second part of this special ability allows you to reroll wound rolls of one, which is okay, but why wouldn't you take something like the Preacher to gain one attack, which is significantly better than rerolling just ones, as one extra attack will do way more, which will go a lot further than the ability to reroll charges and wound rolls of one. The nice thing is, is that she doesn't take up a slot if you include a unit of Repentia in your list, so that's something at least, I guess. Though really what I would say the biggest issue is with the Repentia Superior is that she's a 40 point model, if she was the same cost as a Repentia, she'd probably see more play, as while her attacks are rather weak, she does have 4 attacks total, and she can benefit the units around her while not eating up a unit slot, though as it stands, she's just overcosted, and she really does need either a change in her abilities, or a significant points reduction to make her playable. It would be nice to see her heavily reduced in points, as you would never really take her unless you're taking a squad of Repentia, and she does look rather thematic with them, so it would be nice to have the ability to take her for something ridiculous like 10 or 15 points, so that she she was a much more competitive option than she is now. In 11th place comes the Dialogus. I do like the model, but once again, the rules are just rather weak for it, and I wish they would find a way to make her more relevant. This is another one of those buff characters that produces two auras to benefit your friendly units within six inches of her. The first one adds one leadership to friendly Sororitas models, and the second lets you modify Miracle Dice used by plus or minus one for one die each time you use an Act of Faith for units within six inches of her. It does not stack with other modifiers of this type, such as the one provided by the Triumph of St. Catherine. The Miracle Dice aura is nice, but at 40 points it feels rather underwhelming when the Triumph has that and a slew of other buffs, as well as a very impressive profile as a whole. She does have a unique stratagem known as Blazing Piety, which lets her deal one mortal wound to a Chaos unit or D3 mortal wounds to a Demon unit within 6 inches of her for one command point. This is a bit of an oddball ability, but it can sometimes be useful as one command point for one mortal wound is not the best conversion rate, but once in a while if you just want to inflict one damage and you have that extra command point, this is never a bad choice to use. In any case, maybe if she was less points, it might be an option, but I just don't think she brings enough to the table. This is a unit I'd like to see a rework on because I'd really like her to have more of a unique ability because it's a nice model and there's a lot of interesting concepts you can definitely make with a model that looks like that, but as it stands, she just does something that's kind of okay, but not great at those points and probably is only just marginally fine. And to wrap up the list, in 12th place are the two different Blackstone Fortress models that can be taken within the Elite Slot choice. The first of these models is Gothrey de Monbarad, or however you say that. Hopefully I didn't butcher it too badly. This is a Blackstone Fortress model as mentioned previously. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't really look that different from a normal Crusader model. This model costs a total of 40 points and has the stats of two Crusaders combined, while also having the ability to score extra hits on his attacks. Sadly, he has a power level of two, which makes him way worse than two Crusaders for strategic results 
deserves. Not to mention that being 40 points is a bit too much when you consider that the Death Cult Assassins are already outcompeting the Crusaders simply by being less points than them. Though if you really want to use this model, just swap out one of your Crusaders with him. Though I do like the Crusader models a little bit more than I like him. However, he's not the worst model and I can see why some people might enjoy him. After Gottfried de Manbad comes Pius Vorn. This is a rather unique model, however, it is rather bad. Pius Vorn comes with a flamer weapon that can also function as a melee weapon. However, neither is particularly good and at 30 points and 2 power level, it's a model that's just a little too expensive for what he offers. Though I will say this, it would be cool to see a squad armed with similar weapons as him because it is an interesting concept, though I don't think he will see any play himself. And that wraps up the elite slot choice and as you can see, it's an incredibly powerful unit type for the Sisters of Battle Army and it took a rather long time to cover it as such, but I hope this gives you some insight into how those units function and if you're interested, let me know in the comments below which of the models is your favorite because it would be cool to hear what people think of the different elite slot models because even though a model might be weaker than another model, it might look way cooler than the other model. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe as it really does help the channel out and if you think someone would benefit from either this guide or another one of the army guides that I made, do share the videos as it helps other players out. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.